Hey, it's Jules with Radio Now 100.9 with another episode of Coping with Quarantine. We're going to have a discussion today on the effects of social media. So you'll most likely have a social media account of some sort, maybe Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Do you ever think about the way social media affects your life? Well, we're going to talk about it. My good friend, Dr. Kelsey Vasali, is back joining us today. How are you doing, Kelsey? Hi, Jules. I'm doing great. How are you? I am doing good. Um, social media, it affects all of our lives on a daily basis. So let's just dive right into it. What role does social media play in our mental health? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was thinking about this from different angles, and I think social media plays a different role in many people's lives, but there are some themes across the board. So there's positive and negative pieces, right? And I think some of the overarching kind of themes are that it can be very connecting for people, um, especially during a pandemic when yeah. we're not all able to get together. Um, it can be inspiring for some people. You see a DIY that you want to do and you're like, ooh, I'm going to renovate my whole kitchen. <laughs> um, I've done that. <laughs> yeah. And like with your pantry and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but it also can lead to comparison culture. Um, putting your best kind of self forward can kind of create this less authentic version of people that you see on there. And it can also be really time consuming. It's all about how you use it. Right. And it seems a little hypocritical that uh, I'm going to ask this question because, you know, we are reaching people on social media right <laughs> now. Uh, but this is what I feel is a positive way to impact people on social media. What are some other positive effects of social media? Yeah, I think it can really decrease isolation. Um, I think especially because people aren't able to be in such large groups or they shouldn't be in large groups right now. Social media is a way that people can kind of have group calls or you can feel connected to what people are doing or you can share big news with others that um, is happening in your own life, it can spark creativity. It can inspire you to go do a workout because maybe you see someone else who just did a workout and you're like, oh, I wanna do that too. Um, and you can really share important information with others, kind of like you said, we're doing right now. Yes, I do feel like I'm seeing a lot of that, especially, you know, since we're in the middle of this pandemic, I've seen um, baby gender reveals. Yes. I've seen a lot of people working out, a lot of cooking, which is, has inspired me to cook. Mm -hmm. uh, so what are some negative effects of social media on mental yeah. health? What I see a lot and kind of in my counseling profession, I see this a lot is people come in saying a lot of negative self-talk about themselves, about how everybody else has it figured out and they don't, or this person looks like this and I don't look like this. And so I think the comparison piece can really lower someone's kind of self-esteem or self-compassion, which is rough because half of the stuff that you might see on social media might be altered or it's like the best version of somebody else. I think yep. in like more concerning cases, there can be people who start to feel depressed if they do this continual comparison, or maybe they feel anxious. And it also can lead to um, time wasted that maybe you could have been doing something else. And then the last kind of concerning thing is when people are really mean on social media, making rough comments, um, trolling each other's accounts, at that point, it can become a very hostile space and no longer feel like an uplifting, kind of healthy, connective environment. Yeah, you said a, a couple things that really stuck out to me, the comparing yourself, because I like to tell people, you know, that are depressed after they look at everybody's social media accounts. You're seeing everyone's highlight reels. Mm -hmm. You're not seeing like the 20 pictures that those influencers took before they posted the one that they edited and liked. And I feel like we see that a lot in advertising as well. You know, everyone looks so perfect. Everything looks yeah. so perfect. And uh, so that's something that, that really stuck out that you said. Um, so what are some signs that social media might be affecting our mental health? Yeah, I think the first thing you want to look at is how much time you're spending. So if more time is being spent on social media or on your phone than it actually is talking to other people in real life or doing whatever your work or career is, or even just like meditating without all of the distractions, um, it might be that you're spending a little bit too much time on social media. 
And I think a lot of people start to notice their effectiveness and efficiency goes down. So like when the kind of working from home first started, I would have 15 tabs open on my laptop and some of it would be social media. Some of it would yeah, be work. Of course. <laughs> you don't get done what you need to get done. It actually takes longer to do it. And your work is often more mediocre than if you just set that 20 minutes to do the work and then your two minute break for your social media and then go back to it. I like that. That's nice to like give yourself, you know, a certain amount of time. This is my social media use usage time. And that's all I get. I like yeah. that. So yeah. when does social media usage get really unhealthy? Yeah. So I have um, kind of a, a variety of ideas for this one. And obviously some of the things that I'm saying come from personal experience that I've seen with others or even myself. Um, and one of them is not getting enough sleep. So I've seen this with myself where the screen kind of, it's very alert, alerting and it has like a lot of different colors. And right before bed, it actually can create like, it makes it harder for your brain to turn off when it's time to finally go yeah. to bed. I'm terrible at doing that. Like I'll lay in bed and like, ooh, let me just scroll through yeah. something. Or let me check my email one last time. And it's like, why am I doing this? <laughs> yeah. And like, imagine if you see something that you didn't want to see, like maybe a person yeah. that right before bed, now you're mm -hmm. all hyper and like alert and riled up. You're probably going to have some poor quality of sleep. Um, and what did seeing that really do for you? Nothing exactly upset you. So the sleep piece you can relate to, I can relate to. Um, another is just if you notice when you go on social media and you're feeling triggered all the time. And when I say trigger, I mean you're having some sort of emotion, whether it's anger, anxiety, sadness. If there's always this negative emotion that comes up when you see a certain person's account or even just social media in general, mm -hmm. you need to activate the block option or yes. the delete option, or maybe you need to just not go on your phone for a week. <laughs> I feel like that we, I mean, I'm guilty of it. There's some people that I don't need to be following as mm -hmm. that does happen to me. Like, I'm like, Oh, well, I'm even following this person, but I don't yeah. block them. Cause I feel like it's mean if I block them. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I feel like we also have to, you, you know, take into account how that affects us yeah. and, and just, just hit block. Or I know some people, I know some apps have mute, like you can mute their stuff. Yes. That yeah. Instagram for sure has the mute. I've hit that a few times. <laughs> yeah. Cause you might not want to block a family member, but you might not like what the family member posts and that's okay. Yeah. Totally. Okay. So can you be addicted to social media? I've gone out to restaurants pre COVID of course, and <laughs> seen people just staring at their phones, like a, a table full of people mm -hmm. staring at their phones. And it's like, okay, is this entire table just addicted to social media at this point? What's happening? Yeah. So the kind of concerning answer to this question is yes, you can be addicted. Um, it's considered more of a behavioral behavioral addiction. So you know how like sometimes people have video game addictions yes. or computer addictions. It's similar to that in that you're actually altering the way your brain receives reward cues. So other real life things actually can be perceived as less exciting. So when you're on your social media, your brain's actually releasing dopamine, which is a feel good kind of rewarding hormone or uh, neurotransmitter. However, if you learn, oh, I get to this feel good feeling when I get on my phone, you actually start to like crave that feeling. And so the addiction piece comes when you have that uncontrollable urge to check your social media, to comment, to log in, to you just, it's that urge that you have to act on it. So I thought this was really interesting. Our afternoon guy that's on from three to seven, you can catch him every weekday, Tino Cacino radio. He was talking about how he and his fiance were actually going to do a detox from social mm -hmm. media. They talked about that yesterday. And I was like, huh, maybe I need to detox. Mm -hmm. Is it helpful from time to time to set a time frame and detox from social mm -hmm. media? I always tell people to try things out, right? So like maybe for one person it's helpful and another person it's not, but it could be a really helpful experiment to see if you try it and you can't do it. Okay. What's going on there that you've relied on social media as like a coping tool now. Yeah. And there's different ways to detox. You can set um, an app on your phone or in your settings to tell you when you've been on social media for a certain amount of time. So I have an Instagram app that tells me if it's been over an hour. I know that's a long time, 
but I figure like in hours when I really need to not have spent more on my phone, mm -hmm. somebody else, it could be 20 minutes. For someone who's deep in their social media living, it could be like a three hour alarm, but it tells you, hey, you need to do some you time for the rest of the day. And then someone else might detox for a whole week or um, delete your apps off your phone and only check social media once a day on your computer. So there's so many ways to like decrease or um, take it out of your life for short periods of time. Selena Gomez actually deleted the Instagram app off her phone. Whenever she go. leaves Instagram for a long period of time, she just says that she deletes the app. I think that's an awesome idea. Yeah. So aren't able to do that as much, you know, depending on what job we have. But yeah. I, think that, I think that maybe I'm going to try a detox at some point. So yeah. how do we modify the way that we use social media daily to help us be healthier mentally? Yeah, I think start noticing how it makes you feel. And I know that is such a counselor response, but I, I really mean it. If you get on your phone and you see something and you feel inspired, that's great. If you feel motivated, if you feel connected. But if you notice that you're getting on and most of the time you're feeling resentful, angry, you just want to look at people and pick at them or maybe show other people, look at this person and kind of go down this negative spiral. That's not doing anything for you. That's just kind of building this anger within you. And at that point, you might want to consider, like we just talked about, taking a break, putting mm -hmm. your phone on airplane mode for a little bit. Something that I that has changed the way I social media, I don't read the comments. A lot of celebrities say don't ever read the comments because they're full mm -hmm. of negativity. Yeah. I, I try to read the comments, but if I see a negative comment, I just shut it off. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what? That person might have been having a bad day. That's that. But that's that's something that I've done recently to change the way that I social media. Yeah, um, that is Jules. That's such a good point, because a lot yeah. of the time the comments we make actually have more to do with ourselves than they do with the person we're commenting on. Yeah, because it's kind of like you're projecting your own insecurities or like you, you might have just had a really bad day and you're projecting that all on mm -hmm. someone else that you know didn't really deserve it so always think before you comment <laughs> <laughs> we all do it but it's something it's a good thing to strive for <laughs> yes and what resources are there out there that can help us learn about the effects of social media or maybe how to deal with the effects of social media yeah i think um I was literally just doing a Google search earlier and there's some cool research from Harvard and just six different signs that it's becoming unhealthy. So just like go through a checklist and notice, is it consuming too much of my time? Is it making me in a bad mood? Do I notice that I don't have anything to talk about in real life? If some of those signs are popping up for you, you might need to do something differently. And sometimes we use social media as a tool to distract us from life because life is hard. And in, there's nothing wrong with seeking out therapy or a really close friend or family member to share kind of what's really going on, um, aside from kind of like getting lost in the cyber world or trying to like lose sight of like our day. Yeah. Uh, that was all some really good information. Thank you, Dr. Kelsey. You. Um, where can we connect with you? Yeah, I have an Instagram. It's at dr.kelseyvasali. I also share some videos on YouTube and I like to post on the topic I talk about. So I'll find some good resources to link into my Instagram for social media. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll do this again soon. Mm -hmm. If you missed any of our previous discussions, we've talked about dealing with stress, intuitive eating, debunking therapy myths. We've talked about a lot of stuff. You can find them at radionowindy.com. You can also check them out now. Text Jules, J-U-L-E-S, to 52140. And remember, you can listen to us live at radionowindy.com download the Radio Now app or just tell Alexa to open Radio Now 100.9.